Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Yo Ran Alive. And this is my 148 broadcast coming to you live from Bucharest, Romania, at the JCC, the Jewish Community Center, hosted there on the ground floor. Below the ground floor is the radio, Radio Shalom Romania. Today, I have a very special guest coming in all the way from Colorado, USA, uh, Dr. Gruber, uh, who I came to know through Facebook. So thank you so much for the internet and how social networking just works. Sometimes it's these good vibes that gets two people together. So here we have uh, on today's uh, series of the authors speak, uh, we have Data Groover. Data Groover is the author of Different, his first novel that has won numerous literary awards. He's currently shopping his second novel, Making Right, out to literary agents and is working on a third novel. Data Groover is the winner of American Fiction Awards 2019 in general fiction, as well as new age fiction categories. Silver winner for the Benjamin Franklin Award by Independent Books Publishing Association, grand prize finalist for the Montaigne Medal of the Eric Hopper Book Award and grand prize shortlist for the Eric Hopper Award and has acclaimed five stars for the reader's favorite. Data intends all his books to be entertaining, uplifting and fulfilling. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm gonna read that again because there was um, something wrong with the board that I didn't take care of. So I just realized that, sorry Data. No so Data in <laughs> continuing, Data intends all his books to be entertaining, uplifting and fulfilling for readers. He's been reading He's been writing professionally for more than two decades and is the creator of the Inspired Writer and the Awkward Speakers trainings. Data travels the globe doing these trainings with his wife and writing partner, Rachel Jane Rook. His articles have appeared in various publications, including the San Francisco Chronicle and the Fresno Bee. And he's worked as a staff editor for Torchlight Publishing. Data, welcome to the show. Good morning to you. Thank you. And I, 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 I think you said the awkward speaker. It's the awakened speaker. But... The awakened. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. As no, you, it's, okay. you know, it's, it's speaking can be awkward. It's speaking can be awkward, and many people have have issues. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I do. And okay. thank you, thank you for that nice greeting. You're most welcome. I totally apologize that I kind of messed up the intro a little. Not very professional of me. I apologize for that. Good. Totally. It just added that element of humor. <laughs> I love, I mean, this is not the first time we are talking and we have been preparing for this and understanding, okay, what should we talk about? What should be writ what should be written and the banner. And I understand that you're you're you have such good energy that you just take everything as it comes and, and go with the flow. How do you manage to do that? It's a choice. You know, it's a choice. And uh, what I believe is one of the keys to being happy is being flexible and doing what you just said. And every single person can do it, you know, and uh, there's going to be things thrown in our path all through life. There's no getting around that. But, you know, a lot of times we expect that, no, it shouldn't be like this and it shouldn't be like that. And there's going to be unexpected always, always coming up. So, I think anybody, every single one of us can learn to do that. Yeah, that, that's fantastic advice. I, I should have maybe kept this for the end, but I'm sure you have something more to give us uh, at, at the end of the broadcast just as well. Um, Data. So the name sounds very Indian to me, being of Indian origin. Can you tell us a little bit more about your name? It's not a very unique, uh, it's not a very um, typical American name. It is not. Very unique. No, and I'm not a very typical American, so I think it's <laughs> it. You know, it was, it's funny because it was given to me originally by uh, a, a yoga teacher called me that. And then it kind of became a nickname. I see. A long time ago when I was 19. And, and then at a certain point, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, a third half of the people that knew me started calling me Dada. And so eventually I just said, you know what, I'm just going to use that as my name, as my go-to name. I didn't legally change my name, but I, 
I love data because it, it means in Sanskrit, it means giver. And I can relate to that because I want to give. That's and I go, and I, and I just want to say too, that I think we're all wired like that. We're all wired to give. We're all wired as human beings to contribute uh, positively to the lives of others. That's what I believe. That's fantastic advice. And I totally know that that is true because I feel the same. Um, so I'm with Dutta Groover from Colorado, USA. Everybody out there, thanks for tuning in. If you all have any kind of questions that you would like to ask our host, please feel free to come directly to the broadcast of You Ran Alive and you can write into the chat. I will see that I take up those questions and present it to Dutta. Now, just in case Dutta doesn't have an answer or is not able to reply to you at that very moment, uh, don't worry, I will see that the questions are taken up later as well as that I will get back to you. I will see that I get you guys connected as much. And um, both Joran and I love questions. We love questions. So any question, bring it on. Yeah, we are, most, we are, we are waiting. So also remember that uh, the live obviously does end in an hour or approximately in an hour, but the broadcast will stay on Facebook on my page, Joran and I. So just in case you have not been able to attend for any particular reason, of course, it's a Sunday, you must be going out, come back, maybe listen to it and you can write in your questions uh, whenever you feel like. So don't worry, I will still get the notification. So Dutta, I understand that this is your first book, but I do understand that you have also been writing professionally for more than two decades. So before we really hit on today's first book accomplishment, can you tell us a little bit a little bit about your about you, about your history. I don't know. A little biography about you. Okay, fine. Um, so my schooling originally is an engineer. So I'm an electrical engineer. I'm a master electrician. I'm a certified electronics technician, and so on. And I have uh, I've contributed to major projects on five continents. Uh, oh, wow. Like dollar big projects. And I just found out that you know engineering is not what gives me juice. It's not what turns me on. It's not what uh, really I feel is my purpose in life. I mean, mm -hmm. it was great because especially uh, my area of uh, specialty was around alternative energy. In fact, my company in Europe was alternative energy systems. And I work with hydro, you know, small hydroelectric. I work with wind power, solar power, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so I help people and I like that, but I just wanted to contribute in a bigger way. So I moved from there. Well, it, when I was in Europe, I, uh, I you know, because I work with alternative energy, I eventually became the chairman of the International Committee for Self-Sufficiency. So I go around to different uh, communities and um, places and help them develop their self-sufficiency and alternative energy. Mm -hmm. And I spoke a lot. So when I came back to the United States, and I, and I actually got a little frustrated because um, what I found was that uh, you know, it's great to have all these ways to save energy and alternative energy with people just wasting energy, like it's unlimited. And, yeah. and I got frustrated ultimately. I said, well, you know, I'm going to give this a rest. I came back to the United States and I thought, now, what did I really like about that? Well, I love, you know, helping to change people's lives and I love speaking. So then I started getting into public speaking and my writing all through that time had always been kind of sidelined. Like I always really, really enjoyed writing. So, you know, I wrote for magazines and newspapers and I was under contract with a publisher once to write a, uh, a fiction book. And then they switched to nonfiction in the middle <laughs> of the contract. And, you know, okay. but it's always been my big, big uh, goal uh, really to make a difference in people's lives. Well, that's, that's, that's very nice to hear. And thanks for sharing that. Um, Data. Sure. Um, so tell us a little bit. I saw so this is your first book, and I, I'm, I'm sure many people must have asked you uh, with all the writing that you did, maybe in the newspapers and magazines, uh, what inspired you to really write a full fledged book different? I well, mean, today, many of the book is different. Well, one of the ways I was writing is I used to work as an editor, like you mentioned, I used to work for I used to work for Torchlight Publishing, and I also did mm -hmm. editing. So I helped other people get from like, oh, a good book to an awesome book. Right. And I love doing that. It was I didn't think I'd like it. I actually, honestly, I took I took that work because I needed the money. You know, I was a kind of a starving writer, a cliche right there. Yeah. But I mm -hmm. worked. 
really, really needed the money. And I found out I loved it. And then, you know, so it's always been in the back of my mind. It's like, this is what I really want to do. And then my, my income, all my bread and butter is coming from the engineering. I'm traveling all over the world and doing all this other work. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find the time until I finally got to the point where, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. And I dedicated, you know, the, the, all the time I need to it. And that's what I do now. I mean, I wake up, I wake up early in the morning. I write for hours before I do anything else. So I exercise and I go to work, which is, I work so, from home. So, so I, I, long I, I, and you are doing this every morning, Papa. Every morning. Yeah. Tell us every what time in the morning do you wake up? Sorry, I stopped you there, but. That's all right. No, it's, um, yeah, every morning there might be a couple days a month that I don't, but it's, it's, you know, I'm in the habit, I'm in the groove of it. So it just, it just works. It works for me. And what okay. I found a lot, like from coaching other writers, what I found a lot is that a lot of people will, well, I'm going to write here Well, I'm going to find some time and they never find the time. The time just escapes them, you know, so mm -hmm. it's really good. And it, I know it sounds very left brain. So how can you be creative when you're really in your left brain and planning this time? But um, when you have that time to be creative, I find it's far more productive, you know, at least for me. Some writers can right. write at different times, but especially when there's no interruptions, there's no one else. I have an agreement with my wife mm -hmm. uh, who, you know, we, we run a business together and uh, we do presentations all over the world. And, you know, it's, it's substantial, but she has agreed. She never asked me for anything before 930. It's like, I'm, that's his writing time his exercise time and that's all he's going to do in that time. And it's, it's a perfect arrangement. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pry a little bit more and ask you if you can share with us, um, how do you start your mornings until your beautiful wife uh, comes and uh, disturbs you or takes you along <laughs> the day with you? It's okay. I, I won't tell her you said that, but um, <laughs> how do I start my morning? Yeah. And what time uh, do you wake up? Well, I never use an alarm clock ever, mm -hmm. unless I have a, like an early plane to catch, then I'll use an alarm clock otherwise, or if I'm an event, like if I have an early event that starts, I'm going to use an alarm clock, but I wake up um, at whatever time, like I got out of bed at a um, little after 5 a.m. this morning. Wow. And I do, I do my, my meditation. I do my prayers. Uh, you know, that's, that gets me centered. It gets me, you know, in the consciousness I want to be in. Mm -hmm. And that might be, you know, it might be half an hour, it might be 20 minutes, it might be a full hour, whatever that is. Okay. That's, you know, that's my ultimate priority. And then I write. And then I just write. Generally, sometimes I'll stop at 8.30 to exercise. If I'm in the flow, I'll write all the way till 9.30, sometimes 10.30, if I don't have other appointments. You know, which is one of the things I always suggest to people. So, because I know we have some writers on here. I always suggest have your time set aside for writing like this is my time but leave mm -hmm. after that open so in case when you're in the flow so you can just keep going right right okay okay um and how did you feel when you debuted with this book is, is it everything that you expected great question um no no mm -hmm. it's so much more than i expected and uh the thing is you know, I'm going to share a belief I have about writing. I believe that, that good writing, that mm -hmm. writing people really want to read, it has the, the author has inserted herself or himself into that writing. Okay. And, and what happens is when you do that, it takes some vulnerability and it can be, you know, it's going to bring up stuff. It's going to bring up stuff. And I think that's a, that's a good thing. And I find that um, you know, I write and then I find myself dreaming about the characters and their lives, which I don't know if that sounds weird, but mm -hmm. that happens. And I, I think about them and somebody asks me about my book and I start talking about the book and I talk about one of the characters. This happened yesterday uh, with one of our friends and she goes, you really, you really care about these characters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I really do. Okay. Um, you think you said a lot of things come up while you are writing or while you are going through the process. What yeah. were the kind of things were you talking about? Um, just, just 
truths about myself, for example. I'm just okay. trying my cell phone with my other hand because I didn't do that ahead of time, which I really should have. Take note, all you people doing podcasts, have your phone turned totally off. <laughs> <laughs> it was just ring in there okay so oh let me check as well yep yep mine is on silent at least i learned this from one of my own podcasts i think <laughs> so well need to improve on introductions you need to improve on introductions yes i think I, I need to be more relaxed you need to give me some tips on how to relax that'll be great at the end of the show maybe happy to <laughs> so yeah. Sorry, we, we were talking about what are the things that come up while you were writing the book and you were saying that a lot of things about yourself. Uh, is there anything that you would like to uh, elaborate or emphasize? Well, yeah, so, yeah, so the thing is, first of all, and, and I, you know, the way I write is not how I say everyone should write, but the mm -hmm. way I write works. Okay. It tends to work really well. And what I do is I'll spend uh, four days. In fact, my wife and I, we run, we run training. So we do that. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, four days nonstop, you know, it's like, that's all we're doing. And I write the book in four days. And then wow. I take a year to revise it. I see. Okay. Okay. Because I want wow. the book to come through in a flow and I want it to be there. And this works for fiction, nonfiction, memoir, all types and I've guided a lot of other people through the process uh -huh. really does work so you know and then once it's there then it's you know I it's like it's a rough draft and then I mm -hmm. it out afterwards okay and what about in these four days that you're writing the book so you have a title you have an idea of what the story is going to contain but what if you don't get enough inspiration during these four days or if there's something missing well that okay. is fear many people have mm -hmm. and in my experience that generally doesn't happen you know it, it, unless we put up the resistance ourselves unless we're re really resistant to yeah i just yeah i can't have something come through me or 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 i'm afraid of what's going to come through me or yeah nothing's going to come through me i'm completely convinced but if we open ourselves up it happens i've seen it happen hundreds and hundreds of times right before my eyes and i've done this process many times Okay. You know, the third book I'm working on, mm -hmm. I actually have more than 10 that I have in rough draft that I've done in the four day format. I didn't get the last part. Can you tell us again that? Yes. Yeah, so I, I have more than 10 books all together that are just waiting to be finished that I've written in the four day format. So I've, you know, wow. sat down, written them in four days and and that's good because then you get your book out there. It's not like waiting to come out. What, what happens with a lot of people is they'll, they'll be writing their book and they'll be going through it and they'll, they'll write it as they go along, mm -hmm. which is, you know, that's a, that's a good way to write. It's how some people write. And if you write it over a period of time, what can happen? I believe that we all have books that want to come out of us. So um, sometimes there's two books that are trying to get out at the same time uh -huh. and then it gets confusing for the writer. It gets confusing because okay. they don't know, well, does this go and this that, and how do these things relate to each other? Yeah. I think if you, you know, if you do it all in one swoop, then that's, that's a very powerful way to do it. So, so you finish writing a book in four days time, right? So is this like a normal size book, like 200 pages, 400 pages, or how big is it? Uh, yeah. That's correct. Like, and, and like, for example, so different, right? That's the book that I got the awards for. Yeah. Way, I did not tell you that since we talked, I did get another, I'm a finalist in the, in another award, but. All right. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. All the very best for that. Thank you. And you know, every single one has been uh, a surprise. I didn't expect to get any awards. That's great. That's great. That's very good encouragement, yeah. I think. So, okay. so, thank you. <laughs> so with different, um, you know, I sat down and I wrote it and part of me is like, what am I writing here? You know, I'm writing uh -huh. a book is about a five-year-old boy who doesn't speak. He, mm -hmm. He's the character. He's the, you know, he's the central character of the book. And then the, the, the characters, you know, in his family, that's who the story is told through. Okay. 
and I, you know, and I'm writing this down and I'm just letting it come through me. And I, many times I thought, okay, this, why am I picking something so hard where the central character doesn't speak? You can't show his thoughts because that'd be cheating. So it's basically through <laughs> everyone else's perceptions and conversation and well, dialogue. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that was um, more than once, many, many times as I was writing, I thought, why am I doing it? But I just surrendered to it. And as a result, I, I'm very, very happy with the book that came. Awesome. That's great. So you finish writing in four days and then you said you take the year to publish it or you take the year to revise it? What are the, what? So, yeah, to revise it. And, and I, I say that almost facetiously because it doesn't matter. I mean, I know people that write books in six months. I know mm -hmm. people that write a book in one month. I doubt if I would ever write a book in one month um, and in fact, I have a really interesting story to tell you around that with my current book. Go on, um, yes. But, you know, so, so I'll get the book down and then I'll develop it and then I'll feel the characters and who they are and what they're doing. And, you know, even the bad guys, even mm -hmm. the um, antagonist, you know, and again, that can be in fiction, nonfiction, memoir. There's, there always should be an antagonist. I believe, who gets in the way of the protagonist or the main character yeah. and, you know, and, and really just develop everyone. So people read them and they feel like real people to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I think you did give us a synopsis of different. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about the book or should the people just go and buy the book from Amazon to know more about it? I think they should buy the book. Okay, him. so before we are done, I will definitely put this question up about who, where. Uh, yeah. But if uh, anyway, maybe you want to tell us right now, and I can yes, I can just put it up to, on the link. Got it. And I think I, the easy link for that is datagroover.com. Mm -hmm. And the, and the, my link to the uh, the link to Amazon for different is is right there on my homepage. Okay, so I have got the link here. The, I have opened the website. I was just thinking whether I should I should have added the, the one from uh, Amazon. But I think I, first and foremost, I can share this one so that people have this link. Either way, either way works to just yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell us, can you tell us a little bit about your second book? Yeah, so, and this is what I was gonna, so so my first, so different was self-published. Mm -hmm. I self-published it and, 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 you know, I, I, I feel it's very successful. I am very happy with it. I love the book. I hear a lot of uh, good feedback from people, which I love to hear. One of my favorite <laughs> of things to hear is when people say, oh, that was a life-changing book. It's like, okay, I'm like, I'm doing the right thing. That's what I want to do. Um, so, so that was self-published. This book, which is Making Right, it is going through traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. And so I was putting it out there to agents. And so I had some agents, you know, getting interest in it. Uh, no contracts, no, 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 nobody signing the dotted line saying, I want to represent you. And I went back to my editor and I said, you know, why is this? And this is my editor is somebody who worked with Penguin Press as their uh, editor for 15 years. And he's incredibly good. Mm -hmm. And he came back and said, well, it's too long. It's 115,000 words. It has to be under 100,000 words. You need to cut out 17,000 words. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I should have just self-published. I seriously did. I should have just self-published this. But um, I, you know, I, I whined. I just whined for about a day. And then I said, okay, I'm going to do this. Uh, I cut the book down, which is like, you know, you got to take a word out here, a phrase out here, and it's got to fit. You got to make it all balanced. And when I finished, I realized, oh, it's better. It's a lot better. I'm glad I got this. And I thought, okay, well, that's a great reason I didn't self-publish. Um, and so then I sent it back to another editor because I wanted another editor's eyes on it to another editor. Since I'd made, you know, 17,000 words is a big difference in a book. I sent it to another editor, get his feedback, and he sent me all of these suggestions. I mean, I didn't take every single one, but there's a lot of really good suggestions. Mm -hmm. So again, I just put a lot of work into it because it took me three weeks to, to take out those. <laughs> exactly. 
I'm absolutely sure of that. It must be painstaking just to go through it and see, okay, what can I reduce here? Exactly, exactly. So then, I, then, then with all his suggestions, incorporating the suggestions that I wanted to put in, mm -hmm. it was another couple of weeks and it was, you know, it was, a, it was a big deal. And then just Friday, so just two days ago, it went off uh, to the first publisher for final edits. Okay. So my, my whole point is, mm -hmm. you know, I thought it was done. I thought it was done. It was perfect at 115,000 words. And, you know, thanks to these editors, it's like, yeah, no, it's not quite done. <laughs> and there's people, you know, there's people that say, authors and others, it's editors that say, your book is never done. It's just a certain point when it's ready for publication. I, okay. Now, the question is, why would traditional publishing ask you to reduce the number of words? Does it go to another category? Is there an is there a fixed number of words that one writer should pay attention to when going with traditional publishing? Yeah, so that is a great question. And uh, and that's why a lot of people self-publish because in traditional publishing, they have a lot of rules. I see. And, you know, in my book, well, basically all my books, they really cross certain genre barriers, right? And mm -hmm. uh, traditional publishers, they want your book to go in the sci-fi section, in the romance section, in the uh, thriller section, in you know whatever it is. Which they is very want clear. it to be mm -hmm. very pigeonholed. Yeah, and I'm not a, I'm not pigeonholeable. I made that word up just now on the spot. <laughs> you know. well, there you go. You're getting creative. That's but good. Books. So, so that's you know that's a huge argument for doing self-publishing. So. One of the things, and, and it's just, a, it's an unwritten rule that um, I'm not a first time author. I have a successful self-published book out, but traditional agents and, and publishers and editors see me as first time in the traditional market. Mm -hmm. because, you know, frankly, a lot of self-published books, they're just not that good. So, so going okay. out with a book that's more than a hundred thousand words, unless it's science fiction, science fiction, um, will tolerate for whatever reason they'll tolerate 110 115,000 word book okay. but um, the market for other types of books they just said yeah it's it's just you can do it but no one's going to take it so so it's advantageous because of the publicity or the kind of marketing that the publishing house is doing that neither. is helpful it's neither it's neither it's perception on the on the half of the of the publisher, the editor, and the agent, right? Because the agent's like, because a lot of this, because this is what new authors do a lot. Yeah. They will uh, just go way overboard in the word count. Word count doesn't matter. I just, you know, I, I mean, I literally <clears throat> just heard about somebody the other day. Uh, she had written a memoir, and this is not somebody particularly famous, a memoir that was mm -hmm. almost 100,000 words. Okay. Nobody's going to read that. I see. You know, sight unseen. I don't care how interesting it is. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Okay. But don't you think with the publishing, the, the traditional publishing houses with all their rules and regulation, does it take away the creativity? Mm. Well, you know, it can. It can. How and did it feel for you? Uh, for me, no. Nothing's going to take away my creativity because that's my bottom line. Okay. It's, and that's, you know, again, it's a belief that I have mm -hmm. about nature. We're creative beings. We want to create. We are going to feel fulfilled when we create, create, especially when we create in a way that's going to help others. Right. And, um, okay. So I, this is another thing, uh, part of my, I don't even know if I told you this, but so I used to be a script writer, right? I, I, I mm -hmm. sold one screenplay when I say used to be a script writer. I sold one screenplay to a Hollywood director and never saw light, which means it was never made into a movie. But okay. um, I hated that. I hated the job. Mm. I loved writing the movies, right? I loved making the script to the movies, but I hated the job because it was so rigid, right? I the see. Are much more rigid than for novels, far more. It has wow. to, be, it has to be like that. And then oh. the studios take it and they rewrite it and they rewrite it again and they rewrite it in a whole other way. And when it's done, it's usually not your work anyway. It's not your work anyway. Yeah. I was just thinking, it was like, wow, such so much of cutting and trimming and, and, and bringing it, it's completely lost. I suppose it's just 
photoshopped as one would say <laughs> it's like not your work at all really good analogy it's yeah it's 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 photoshopped and you know there's there are good movies that come out there's no doubt mm -hmm. but it's a lot of you know a lot of them are very mediocre and it's like you know the marketing looks at it and let's change this and let's add this mm -hmm. and let's mm -hmm. feel and they get okay now we get it rewritten by this writer and added to that writer and I, I I never thought that there was there was so much into it where it, it's so you know would streamlined would be the right word I'm not really sure like you cannot go out of the margins like you have to stick to the exactly so many rules oh uh, great so I'm with Dr Groover from Colorado USA if anybody has any questions and you would like to ask that or anything feel free to write into the broadcast into the live chat and I will see that I take it up with Dr um that for now i have uh one of our viewers just saying that it's so interesting the process can be so different i mean this is when we were talking about the fact that you're writing the book in four days time so uh sophia thank you so much for writing that uh if there are any kind of questions that you would like to ask please feel free write it in uh till then we continue uh anything that you would want to tell us about the third book yeah well i i would love to talk about the third book but i just want to say something about please. sophia a uh, question mm -hmm. and by the way Sophia is one of the uh, main characters in different the same. oh <laughs> uh, okay Sophia from the book writing it no I'm not that woo woo don't worry but um uh, <laughs> the thing is there is no exact right way to write but there's certain things that tend to work much better than others yeah right? of course. like for example you get Stephen King is He's not my favorite author, but he's many people's favorite author. Mm -hmm. and, and he's a good writer, right? He, and he makes millions and millions and millions of dollars from his writing. And he writes, he makes up the story as he goes along, as he's writing. Wow. You know, he wow, does the whole fascinating. thing, which is kind of like what I do in three <laughs> days, in four days, sorry. But <laughs> he'll do it like over the, until the book's done, he writes it and blah, 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 blah. And they, and he has it edited, right? He gets mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. for him. But that's one way of doing it. Other people, so I studied, studied with Robert McKee, and he's a screenwriting coach. Okay. And, uh, a lot of people don't know who he is, but for the, the Academy Awards, the last mm -hmm. Academy Awards, 14 of the winners, because like all together, there's what? There's like, I don't know, 80, 90 winners all together. 14 of those winners were students of his. Wow. So I'm also a student of his, and I learned a lot about screenwriting from him. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things he says, he says, spend three months outlining before you start. Okay. Could you elaborate what, what would outlining really mean? Well, it's just you basically say, you know, the, the plan of the story. So just the very bare bones, you're not writing anything out. And then you're adjusting that outline. You spend three months. So that's the opposite of how I work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? That's, that's the total opposite. And this man, I mean, he knows what he's doing. He's coached a lot of people to, to very high levels of success. Um, the, the number of movies that have been written under people that have studied under him. It's, it's right. amazing. Mm -hmm. But... I just, you know, it's a different method. So there yep. are different methods. You need to find out what works for you and understand that certain things don't work very well. Don't like I in. have not seen anybody. Well, no, I let me qualify that. I've seen very few people who are able to like just write whenever they have the time and they don't have a chunk of time or a space where they write, even if it's once a week, one day a week. And right. one thing that I've always done, and this is also obviously in agreement with my wife, is um, I spend, you know, and we, like I said, we travel around the world, we do our events live, well, up until 2020. Yes, we'll yes. we will go live again. Just give it some time. We need a break. This is what is happening. Yeah. But I always, times. I always do writing retreats. So I am you know, undisturbed for a week straight. And I do it a few times a year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, okay. And both my wife and I see that as an important investment in, in, you know, my life's work and in our work together. So you are attending life uh, writers retreats or you are, uh, I mean, attending or you're hosting these? Uh, no, these um, actually all three. <laughs> so I host writers retreats. I attend writers retreats. And I have self-guided, I am all alone 
in this cabin in the woods <laughs> right on the street. Oh, where is your cabin in the woods? Let, let, let us get a little more mystical. Okay, so in the Otways in Australia, because we're normally there again mm -hmm. up until this year, we're there like about a third of the year because we do a oh lot of events. Oh my God. We love Australians. Fantastic, and, and okay. We, yeah, from New Zealand. So um, in the Otways, which is like, if you go from Melbourne and you go down to the West, mm -hmm. there's rainforest. And there's this beautiful, amazing forest. So I get a off-grid cabin up in there, and I stay there for a week, and I write. I, I was not even expect expecting you to say anything outside America, but you went all the way to the other side of the globe. <laughs> That's fantastic. OK, yeah. I'm really glad. I'm really glad. Yeah, and um, then I go sometimes up in the mountains in Colorado. Again, mm -hmm. off-grid is important, so I don't get any no email, no phone calls. Mm -hmm. I'm off-grid. In Oregon, I spent a lot of time in Oregon. So those are my my three biggest areas where I retreat to for my writing. Yeah, I, I see today we find it, even for me, we find it so difficult to get off for our electronic devices. You know? so and then thinking about the time that you spend alone, I think, I think, yes, it is true and it is very valuable to just disconnect and just connect with yourself. I agree, I agree, it's so important. And, and I want to say, it's not the only way I write. So I do have my every day. I'm getting up early. I, mm -hmm. Like I said, I do prayer meditation. Right. Writing, and I supplement that. I supplement that with that. And I do it. I try to do it. At least, I generally do it up until this year, three, three weeks a year. Fantastic. That's, that's, that's really good. That's really good. Um, so... So tell us about the third book. I don't know if we touched uh, on that, if you want to share with us about. Uh... So my third book, and I, yeah, and I didn't yet tell you the premise of the second book, which we can go back to if you want. But this third book is, uh, it's about a fireman, right? He's a fireman and he has relationship issues with women. He, he picks the wrong partners, he uh -huh. gets in trouble, you know, he goes for, for who's really attractive and not really much else. So he's learned a lot about uh -huh. relationships. He was an arsonist when he was a teenager. Now he's a fireman. Wow. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and he is fighting fires. Like he'll be in a situation. And, you know, if you've ever seen a big fire, there's people running around. It's super high energy, lots of excitement. And he'll hear voices. And he, you know, the book opens. He is, uh, he's, He's in the in the background. He's not up close to the fire. He's like working with the engines and stuff. And he hears somebody calling for help. I see. And he tells his lieutenant and the lieutenant says, no, we didn't hear anything. People are closer. Anyway, long story short is he hears things. He hears I things. See. And he and he went and disobeys everyone's orders and he saves this little girl's life. Wow. Fantastic. So he has some good intuition in him. Okay, this sounds like an interesting book just as much. Okay, you said you, you wanted to tell us a little bit more about your second book as well. Well, only if you want me to. Yes, please. <laughs> if you feel like sharing, yeah. definitely. Th this broadcast is for you, Tata. So you're the man of the show for today. Thank you. And I would love um, to yeah. have you again, of course. You know that. I would love that, yeah. So my second book is a story about a young woman who is in modern day Texas, present day, mm -hmm. and she's running an organic farm with her brother and stepfather. And she has visions, right? She has visions of things that will happen, but she does not want to have those visions. They drive her nuts. She mm -hmm. hates them. And she doesn't know what she's supposed to do about them. She gets visions about, and so what? So what if I knew about this ahead of time? And so that's one story. There's a parallel story. So it goes one chapter, the next chapter. I the see. The parallel story mm -hmm. is her grandmother in Tennessee in the 1960s who also had visions of things that would happen and also did not always know what to do about them. So each one dealt with them in their own ways. And then the stories overlap. There's people in one in oh, Tennessee nice. who were later in Texas and mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of connection and, and all that. So, and that was another story that was very hard to write, but wow, do I ever love it. I just, <laughs> I just love it. When is, when is your second book um, meant to release? Well, that's the one it's right now in final edits, right? Mm -hmm. With my editor. And right. 
hopefully in a week, it'll be going out again to agents. Then once the agents get it, then they need to sell it to the publisher. And so it could easily take a year, year and a half. Okay. How many agents do you usually work with? Uh, just one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you plan to write only fiction? No. No. <laughs> and that's a great question. You got all these great questions, Joran. I'm impressed. <laughs> so, uh, Thank you. <laughs> you are an interesting personality, Rata. And I think it just goes together. So it's, I mean, really enjoying this conversation with you. And I'm sure the others are as well. I am so you so motivate me to those questions. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, so sorry, what was your question again? The question was, would you be writing anything besides fiction? Oh. Yeah, so um, I actually was writing my memoir and I'd been working on my memoir for four years. Mm -hmm. And I got inspired to like, you know what? I, I want to do my, I want to do fiction. I want to write nonfiction. Mm -hmm. So I want to do all three, memoir, fiction, and nonfiction. But right now, what's really calling me is fiction. Okay. And I may write another, I don't know, three, four, five books before I go back to my memoir. I do want to, I'm going to finish it, but I just don't know when. Okay. So I have definite plans for doing that. You know, and it's in terms of, and it's funny because my left brain, my logical brain says, yeah, you want to do nonfiction, you know, books on public speaking. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've been honored. I've been blessed. I've trained some of the best public speakers in the world. We're going to touch that. So I've trained, speakers, I've trained politicians. I've trained so many people and, you know, who make a difference in the lives of others. That's great. That's I love it. So I could write a book about that. Right. It'll be definitely, definitely interesting. But I'm it sure. might be in a long line of other books that are going to come first. Okay. Well, whatever you think needs to come first will come first right it's in your hand exactly okay um so i'm with data prover from colorado usa we are talking about uh the author in him today and the series of the author speaks if you have any kind of questions and you'd like to curiously ask him definitely write those down into the chat of the live broadcast for your ran alive that's who ran alive Okay, so um, I was wanting to know, uh, that, uh, what motivates you? What motivates to, me? In writing. Uh, what really motivates me is, is wanting to make a difference. I want to make a difference. And I want to do it by entertaining people. I want, here. so I'm, I'm going to tell you my goal. Okay. And that is that when you pick up one of my books, you can't put it down. That you are like, 4 a.m. and I'm like, damn, I'm so tired that Dada Groover, he made me read this stupid book. <laughs> okay. That's stupid, but, um, you know, the, and I've literally had this. I've, I swear I've had this. I've had people say, you know, I had to be at work at 7 a.m. I finished your book at five. Wow. 30 minutes sleep before I had to get ready. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's great. So I want it to be very entertaining. And then I want it to have a massive takeaway for people. Mm -hmm. I want a massive takeaway for people so that when um, when they finish reading it, somehow it's enhanced their life. And I believe that writing can do that. I believe that writing is so powerful. It has that capacity. And this is not from me specifically. It's from everybody. Anybody can write and make an impact with their writing. So so that's really what motivates me. So I've you can see I've got some bass guitars in the background. Mm hmm. So for many years, I was playing professional music. I just, I love music and I love playing. I love performing. And then I, you know, it was a certain point and this was, let me see if I can remember the, I was in 2000, uh, 2008, I believe it was yeah. so that's years ago. Um, and I was, I was writing at that time, but I was playing music and I loved it, but I realized, you know what, I'm not changing lives with it. I'm making people, you know, giving them some enjoyment. Mm -hmm entertainment but you know it's not why i'm here on this planet i i i want to in you know entertain them i want to engage them i want to make people happy but i want to do it in a way that also uplifts them and inspires them and now i'm now you got me fired up you're around go on keep talking i'm listening we are here to listen to you and you know i want to help them find their highest and best selves 
you this know, is absolutely now, important. Like, what's that? This is absolutely important. I totally agree. It's so important. Please go on. Mm -hmm. so I do use the, but I do use the music. My wife, my wife, uh, I married a country music singer from Australia. You know, and is she? Oh, yes. okay. And, news to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, was I mean, she doesn't, you know, she still sings. Well, we sing in and and perform in all our big events. And what that does, it just helps people get into it and assimilate what we've taught wow. and wow. just, you know, makes a different kind of event. So, you know, my music is secondary to my writing and it supports me in my okay. writing. What, during your four hour, sorry, I, I, I was, I, I stopped you there. Please go on. I was going to say, I think for everybody, it's important to look at what supports you. Look at who supports you and also what supports you. No, so, you know, with mm -hmm. music, it totally supports me in my writing. Like I believe without music, I would not be the writer I am, you know, okay. on, an yeah. ongoing, on an ongoing basis. It's a way, you know, reciprocating. It's not that music has to be yours, but I would say, find out what supports you, what makes you, um, puts you in that development track as a writer, as an author. Wow. Okay. During these hours of writing that you're concentrating on your writing, do you do anything else? Like, do you suddenly decide to get up and just play the guitar, the bass guitar for a while, or do you decide to sing, or it is just complete four hour, non four hour writing, four hour, right? Or four days, sorry. Four days. <laughs> four days. <laughs> you shorten the time to four hours. Right. <laughs> Yes. So like when I go to all the, the writing retreats, like in the Otways or in the in the in the Oregon Cascades or out in the hills in Colorado here, I always bring my guitars with me. And sometimes I'll even bring a guitar and a bass. So whenever wow. I feel like it, yes, I play guitar, I sing uh, and it really helps me. It this really helps fantastic. me. What I don't do is I don't check my email. I don't check my messages. I don't you know, it's like when I'm in my writing mode in my uh, morning writing time, my phone is off. I mean, I have my, I had my phone on this morning so you and I could communicate. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise it would not be on until 9.30. People know, people that are on our team, they, they're not gonna try to call me before then because it, I, they won't get an answer. I, I, I think it's very important to have a, a pattern, uh, to have um, a to-do list, to know exactly what you wanna do and you do it. Absolutely. Concentrate on that. Um, lovely. Uh, Zata, I wanted to know, um, how is the scene in the U.S. with traditional publishing and indie publishing? That's a great question. So it's, it's something that's, it's massively changing. So, uh, you know, starting about, about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. starting longer, like 12 years ago, it started to become a massive shakeup in the publishing industry. And you know, first they were saying ebooks are taking over, right? Ebooks right. by 2020. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, ebooks went up and up and up, and then they plateaued and then they started going down in percentage to print books. Mm -hmm. Print books are not going away. You know, so everything I write, I focus on okay, how is it going to be for an ebook? You know, whether it's a Kindle or an EPUB or an, uh, a Barnes Noble notebook, whatever it is. Yeah. How's it Right there, and how's it going to be in print? Um, so mm -hmm. that's the thing. So the industry itself. So again, so that was about 12, 13 years ago. They were saying that, and then and then they had all these publishers that combined, right? So right. you know, there's only five big publishers now. So that's one way that whole industry changed. But there's lots and lots of small press publishers. Mm -hmm. So that's a new equation. So it used to be traditional publishing, self-publishing. Now there's traditional publishing, self-publishing, and small press publishing. Okay. So all three so different, they've all three got advantages. I see. You know, like I mentioned before, so so I'm, you know, this with my second book, I'm going um, with traditional publishing, sometimes gritting my teeth as I'm doing it because, oh, you know, I wish I was self-publishing, but like I mentioned before, mm -hmm. you know, publishing i would have already published this book it would not be as good as it is right now i understand okay thanks for throwing light on that uh, yeah i want to inspire i'm going to tell you my big goal and if you know laugh 
because it's fine. You know, if people don't laugh at your goals, they're not big enough, all right? That's what I say. <laughs> so I want to inspire. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. I want to inspire millions of people with my books and it gives me a whole different mindset. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's okay. This book could be good. I want it to be that good so it can go, it'll go viral or whatever. Absolutely, absolutely. I wish you the very best for that journey, Dr. And I'm sure you will. You are persistent and I love that. I'm sure it will. Thank you. With today's um, you know, situation that we have with the pandemic uh, that's affecting every industry, um, how do you think it has changed in publishing or as a writer, as an author? Great question. So it's made a lot of people very, very uncertain. And I've noted this from my conversations with editors and mm -hmm. agents. You know, people are, you know, I get so many, it's like, well, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how things are going to go. And, and they're, you know, a lot of people are kind of afraid to make move. What I would say is if it's your calling, if it's something you really want to do, just do it. Don't mm -hmm. let anything stop you or slow you down. Cause that's what I see a lot, not okay. just necessarily with authors, but yep. everyone who's like, oh, I can't do this. Or, oh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm at home and watch Netflix where well, you're at home, but there's so much you can be doing there. I, I would want to second that with you, Tata, because, you know, the fact that I'm doing the broadcasting right now uh, through uh, Radio Shalom Romania, and I'm really thankful at this point to Sophia and to Adi that let me host and, and do the shows. I started it during the pandemic. I started it at home, not knowing whether I should or not. So I'm really glad at least I'm here and I'm getting to uh, interview you and talk with you and share with you life. And maybe people can learn uh, from, from this conversation. And this is exactly my motive where one doesn't know everything and everybody learns something from somebody else. So I don't definitely feel if somebody needs to take that step, he should, it doesn't matter. He should definitely, definitely do that. And yeah. guess what? I got a job during this pandemic when people sadly have, have lost jobs. So there's, you never know when it's the right time. So I definitely agree to what you said. If you feel like you want to do that and take that step, you should do it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, pandemic or not or whatever it is, mm -hmm. there will always be things that will try to get in your correct. way. Correct. You know, True. just like just like with a good book, there's always going to be something that gets in the way of that. You know, that protagonist, your main mm -hmm. character there. Yeah. And, um, you know, be a good protagonist in your own life and find your way around whatever is going to try to stop you because. Mm. You know, no one's going to do it for you. And this mm -hmm. is, it's, it's like, you know, I joke with my wife all the time, Rachel Jane. It's, you know, I say, well, you know, I'm going to go do some writing because that book is not going to write itself. Yep. And True. no one's going to write it for me. True. So, Data, with this being said, were there any difficult uh, brickbacks that you got or some negative uh, feedback? Uh, that was, was difficult to take it as a writer and maybe oh. something that kind of helped you grow from it. That is, yeah, you're just, you're just a reservoir of great questions today. Um, I love this question for a couple of reasons. One is, uh, you know, my motto, one of my mottos is mm -hmm. that, you know, <clears throat> I, take, I take bad advice, even if it's from my enemy, and I take, you oh, know, wait, wait a second, no. <laughs> I accept <laughs> good advice, even if from my enemy, and I reject bad advice, even if, if it's from my best friend. So this is important. So yeah, and I've had people give me, like I've had, you know, I've had my writing stir people up, and that's mm -hmm. the kind of writing I want to do. And mm -hmm. I've had people angry at me. Um, I, with this next book, with Making Right, it's going to be even much more. I know it already. My okay. editor said, you better be ready for some blowback because there will be some um, right how, how do you decide which is good advice and which is bad advice um so that's something i know I, you know i weigh it logically and i weigh it intuitively i weigh it with my brain i weigh mm -hmm. it with my heart you know okay. i weigh it with my gut you know what does it feel like like and for example so you know <clears throat> excuse me i hire editors to help me write right and and they're not cheap you know if they're good okay um, so the, the, the feedback I most recently got from the editor who saw my book after I cut down the 17,000 words, 
he gave me a lot of suggestions that were really good. And he gave me some suggestions like, well, those are okay. I may use them, I may not. And some suggestions that, well, that's not where I want to go with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do, or I just disagree. I see. You know? Okay. So it's, you know, he gave me insights, mm -hmm. you know, or, or if I'm working with a woman editor, obviously she's going to give me insight. And um, I always got an insight every time I've worked work with an editor and I don't feel I have to take everything they have to say. Of and course. that can be taken to the extreme. So I've had mm -hmm. clients that I've worked with who took their book to an editor and the editor gave them some great suggestions mm -hmm. and they rejected everything the editor suggested. I see. Because they wanted to get their book out in time, mm -hmm. but the book wasn't ready and the book was promoted very well, but the book did not go anywhere because of it that. It didn't take off. Yeah, it wasn't good. Okay, well, we get that. Uh, I just want to share that Nancy has written and saying that that's great to phone off when you are writing or music. That that I uh, that her, so she's telling you I do that too. So she's agreeing uh, to your strategy of switching off when you are uh, concentrating on something uh, something important. Or well, and the thing one is, task at a time. Absolutely, and I don't have these guitars, these bass. These are bass guitars. Yeah. I'm turn my camera over here a little bit too. Definitely. I have others. You can see there's there's the, there's two more bases and a guitar over there. Wow. They're not just decorations. They're here in my room, so they're within easy reach, and I can yeah. just pull them off the wall. Um, I just did it yesterday. You know, I just pulled off the wall and play, and it just like awesome. helps awesome. In that creative space. Um, my wife has written in uh, Daniela, and she's saying I find the stories of your books really interesting, particularly the second one. I love a little bit of supernatural powers in fiction. Uh, if a movie producer wanted to convert your books into films, would you consider agreeing to it? Of course, absolutely. Why not? You know, and the thing is, I'd want it done in a certain way. And mm -hmm. that's always, it's a dance between the author and the film production because, um, you know, you can totally let go of control. You can have a little bit of control. Yeah. And, um, and some authors want absolute control, which is generally going to ruin the film. <laughs> because it's different it's a different means of yep. storytelling and it's a whole different art and there's a different way of doing it and um you know there's there's yeah i would i would be totally off for that and i just want to say thank you very much for that um call it a validation or whatever but all my books have some supernatural element if you want to call it or metaphysical however you want to say it okay yeah. So Daniela, thank you for writing that. And anybody else that would like to ask a question or write it in, say something, uh, definitely do that. Use the chat from the broadcast page from your ally, and you can ask Tata Groover the question that you would like to ask. Um, that's, I hope you're not pressed for time because I am really enjoying this conversation and I have still a few questions to ask you. So, yeah. all right, this is great. I'm very glad. Where did the time go? <laughs> it just flew away. You know, time flies when you're spending time with good people, right? Yeah. So um, tell us, tell us, uh, so getting off uh, of uh, data as the writer, tell us, tell us about Groover seminars. Or so, maybe in short, I mean, not in, in depth. Yes, want, but yeah. Yeah, Groover seminars. So my wife and I, like I mentioned, we travel around the world. We do these seminars. Mm -hmm. um, we basically, we show people how to be world changers, you know, and yeah. we show people how to do it, how to make income from that. We show people how to become amazing at it. We show people how to take whatever art they have, whatever, you know, goal they have in life and how to make that their sustenance and also how to you know spread that to lots of other people mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we love it because you know it's kind of like it's it's the ripple effect like we show people how to make a difference and that makes a huge difference so we do in fact we have an event coming up okay called the awakening and mm -hmm. um in yeah it's going to be this year it's going to be virtual normally it's a big live event but we yeah. have we have live music that we're going to be um performing wow. during that. and you know basically mm -hmm. through the mm -hmm. medium of writing speaking and running your business as a spiritual practice you know which wow. 
Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Very powerful. Yeah. So that is, if you want to check that out. So we've got two versions. We're going to do an Australia version, Australia hours, mm -hmm. um, and the US version. And if you go to awakenyourimpact.com, then it'll give you the you know choice to click on US time zone or Australia time zone just to see what that event's all about. But that's you know that's the essence of what we do. My wife runs a body of work called the Art of Feminine Presence as well. Um, we do you know again we do speaker training, we do writer training, and all those kind of things. But the the best way um, to get into understanding what we do is mm -hmm. going to that awakenyourimpact.com. I'm just trying to find the website right now so that I could just write it down. That'd so, uh, and I will just add it in there, awaken your, awaken your impact. Would that be correct? Awakenyourimpact.com. Okay, okay. Um, I understand. Uh, could you tell us, I also see that you are, uh, you are founded the Authentic Speaker Academy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so, and, and we call that now the Awakened Speaker, and that's a training we've just done, and, you know, like I mentioned before, we've just been blessed, we've had, I actually don't drop names, I mm -hmm. work with some very famous people, but I, I'll tell you why it's, I feel that's inauthentic, because, like, for example, say I, I trained Tony Robbins, which I haven't, right, but let's say I had, you know, he's also taken training from 30 other people. So, right, right. But I've had awesome results with that. And I've mm -hmm. helped people make a huge difference, make a huge difference. Um, and, and it's not about making the money. It's about doing, you know, feeling fulfilled and finding your purpose in life and really making right. a difference in the lives of others. So the, the clients right. that are perfect for us are people that really want to make a difference in the world. You know, and some of them mm -hmm. just may not know how to do that, or they may have an idea of how to do that, but how do they do that and, you know, have it as their livelihood. So they're, you know, they're being sourced by that. I'm glad that you're, in, you're, you're an inspiration to a lot of people. I'm very, very much sure about that. Thank um, you. Oh, what about page turning fundamentals? Yeah. So page turning fundamentals is... Uh, so basically, this is a program for writers that we do, and mm -hmm. that is, you know, it really helps people to write, and again, fiction, nonfiction, memoir, write in such a way that people can't put your book down. So people are engaged. I got to find out what happens, or I got to get to the next step, or whatever that is. Right. So that's, uh, mm -hmm. Again, that's training for authors, and if anybody's interested in that, they can just write us, um, email us at support at datagroover.com and that's again data groover is d-a-t-t-a-g-r-o-o-v-e-r so there's two t's and two o's and i i say it because you know people get it wrong so but yeah so, we'd be happy so support to. at datagroover.com that's correct this would be for um that would be for the um the page turning fundamentals if you'd like to know more about that okay so i yeah. would write okay because i'm kind of writing this down as we yeah uh, for the page turning fundamentals yeah yeah okay I, uh, I will continue i will continue writing but let me just take up a, a comment that has come in uh nancy continues to say my mother is an award-winning writer very selective about making her novels into films nancy you must mention her name so we know who she is however few converted to shows in bbc so I am finding it very interesting. Thank you, Yuran and Data. Nancy, thank you so much for mentioning that and thank you for your comments. Yeah. Um, so the way I came to know Data, and we are way over the hour, but please do feel free to write in those questions. I'm going to take it up. I'm really enjoying this show uh, and express your concern or question that you might have, something that you might want to learn or understand through Data Grover on the page, Yuran Alive through the broadcast chat. Broadcast Anyway, so the way I came to know uh, that I was to, I was looking for pages where I could kind of have shows like these, uh, and I found the writers group, and that's where I, I got in touch with Data, and uh, well, we got in touch, and that's how we are here. So Data, would you like to tell us about the writers group page on Facebook? Is it yours, or are you a part of a team? 
No, I, I am. It's not mine. It's, I'm part of a team. I was invited to moderate it just because they needed help with moderation. And okay. I've been a moderator there for, I don't know, maybe a year and a half, maybe two years. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I just want to say that there are, there's a lot of writing forums and some people on these forums are brutal. You know, uh -huh. when you mean brutal, what do you mean? Verbally, they are you know, not friendly. Uh, well, somebody will ask a, a great question about writing and somebody else will come off and just smash them or, or just say something very derogatory or mm -hmm. something like that. So I want I just want to caution anyone because I've seen people discouraged by those kind of forums. I mean, right. a great source. They're a great source for me. Uh, and sometimes people use it for just uh, political posturing and all kinds of different things that don't belong there. And, or, you know, it's about writing, but they'll come back harshly. And I'm only saying that because you got to have thick skin if you want to participate in any online writers forum, in my experience. Some are, some are easier than others. Um, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. I'm a member of uh, Fiction Writers, um, you know, which is, um, the, you know, and different groups have different standards. Different groups have different standards. So I just want to say that, you know, just uh, buyer beware, if you will. <laughs> just, you know, yeah. know that it might be a fit for you and it may not be because, yeah. like, some people. Na are yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Nancy writes and saying brutal is good, but I, I think I totally understand what you are trying to say. It's not, they're not discouraging, but they're completely taking the topic to a completely whole different level. Right. Or yes. So sometimes that happens and mm -hmm. sometimes they're just trying to discourage. Yeah, I, can, I get you. I you get know, you. Writers that are frustrated themselves and then they, um, you know, they're frustrated themselves and then they want others to also be discouraged and be non-productive like they are. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying this to this, the group, you know, mm -hmm. this met, it was through that writers group. Um, and I'm saying it's a great group and I've, I've, I've learned and gained a lot from it. You just have to make sure you have thick skin if you're going to go into a group. That group is like 150,000 people or something. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, it happens very often where people are frustrated. And I've seen this happen in other pages as well. When somebody's asking a very simple question, and from one reply, or even right from the beginning, the conversation just gets very witty or gets very critical, uh, very sarcastic, and just takes a whole different turn. <laughs> This guy was just asking for help. <laughs> what happened to the whole conversation? Right. So a lot of us who are writers, we're just, you know, we can be a little extra sensitive. Definitely. Yeah, I totally get you. People that are creative. So here's the thing. To be, this is my opinion, to be creative, you have to be vulnerable, right? You have to show what's inside you, right? To mm -hmm. be really creative. And if you're yep. doing that, then you're going to be more sensitive to criticism and to harshness. So totally understandable. Thanks yes, that was a tangent. Cool. I didn't. I didn't plan on going on, but I just, I just wanted to give that heads up. That definitely, yeah. you know, get the help you can, get the uh, association you can. Uh, writer yeah. groups. There's a lot of online writers groups. So groups. Those can be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those can be really good. Okay. So that's a just a couple of more questions um, before we kind of. We kind of say goodbye for now. Um, I, I remember you told me that one should write in the start of the show. Uh, one should know what his his calling and be happy. Obviously, that will that is what will make him happy to do things uh, as the days go on for his life. So, is there a way that you would like to share how one can tap into and get to know their calling? That's a very big question. And that's, I think that's one of the best questions that somebody can ask because, uh, okay, so just first of all, I'll give you my own self as an example. Yeah. So like I said, I was an engineer. I, mm -hmm. I'm still an engineer. I just don't, I don't practice. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was before that, I was a, well, and, and during that, because these things overlapped, I was a um, performing professional musician. Mm-hmm. You know, I've worked on sound reinforcement. I've worked on, you know, live events. Mm -hmm. Now we're throwing live events and everything kind of helps. But um, so I've done different things. And what I've done every time has gone all the way into it, like full throttle, like all right. the way up. Mm -hmm. And 
what I believe is like, let me just give you an analogy of swimming, right? So Please. if you're in a swimming, you know, tournament, right? You're in a race, a contest. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, you got to know, okay, I, this is the lane I'm going to be in. Well, you don't actually get to pick in a contest. <laughs> yeah. but I'm just, right. But you know your lane. Analogy. You, you pick a lane and then you dive in, right? And you swim hard. So what happens a lot of times is people will, they can't decide what lane. Oh, do I want to do this? I want to do this. Or I want to do this. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to jump in this lane. Mm -hmm. And then they'll just dog paddle. Or they'll just tread water. They won't go anywhere. Okay. So what I feel that we need to do is swim hard. Pick a lane, dive in, swim hard. And then you may find out, hey, this isn't the right lane for me. But mm -hmm. you'll never know if you don't swim hard hard then if you swim hard okay this is not the right lane like with me engineering like i said i got some massive credibility in engineering i don't care it's for me it's like i at least it got me to where like this is not for me i'm going to change lanes i'm going to absolutely go absolutely and i think that's fantastic advice multiple times that's mm -hmm. totally, good, totally fine totally legal and i believe that's the only way that you're going to find your purpose okay so what are you saying is whichever wh whichever thing you are doing at the moment, do it and give it your best and you think, and that's when you realize either this is for you or this is not for you. And that's when you maybe you change lanes and you look into uh, a exactly. different perspective. Okay, exactly. okay, lovely. And what I believe is if you take something all the way, just like with my music, when I was, you know, I was playing professionally in, mm -hmm. in Washington DC area when I was 15, when I was still in high school. And I was playing with some, I played with a lot of famous people. It was awesome. Yeah. And, you know, it's not my primary thing, but it now it supports me in my primary thing. I'm very so glad. Take something all the way. If you take it full speed ahead, mm -hmm. then it will support you in many other ways. Yeah. And, so, and you'll find out. And again, with music, if I, I believe if I hadn't done it all, you know, full throttle. Mm -hmm. I feel like so many musicians are kind of like, you know, dabbling in here and there and like, do I want to do that? And like, they never find out. Right. Right. So I would, I would just, I would be a little maybe selfish right now and ask you if I'm doing broadcasting, what would be for me to paddle hard? Or is this a self introspective question that I need to ask myself? What do I need to do to paddle real hard to go ahead with what I'm enjoying to do? Well, I think you're doing the right thing. I mean, you're reaching out to people and, you know, and yes, it's definitely a self introspection thing. And I think if okay. you, you know, again, I get a lot from meditation and prayer. I get a lot of feedback and I get a lot of, you know, then ideas pop up and it's like, well, what can I do? Do you want to take it to the next level? That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Decide that. Do if you do, then just notice the answers you start getting okay. you know, from God, from the universe, you know, whoever, I mean, I'm talking to everybody here, you know, whatever your belief is, decide what you want. You, again, you decide that lane and then you see, you start seeing what comes up. Mm -hmm. Oh, Very here's cool. another idea. Oh, here's something else I can do. Lovely, lovely. That, that. So I have Nancy saying, I love the idea, swim hard. And continues to say, I agree, you're on anything in life. We got to give our best to succeed. So Nancy, thanks for writing in. Well, we're almost done with today's broadcast from 148. Um, the authors speak with Dutta Gruber from Colorado, USA. I had a fantastic time. If you all have any final questions or something that you would like to ask right now while we are on live, do that. Come to the page, Duran Alive, and take the chat and write it in there. So Tata, before, before we go, any words of wisdom that you would like to share with us? Um, yeah. Anything final? Or... I would like to reiterate the thing of, you know, choosing your lane, going with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the biggest thing, and Goethe said that, right? This, and I, I, I never get the quote exactly right. But, you know, um, okay. action is powerful because there's magic in it, right? Mm -hmm. There's another word, I forget the quote, but it's all about action. You got to, you take action, there's going to be magic in it. Taking action is so big. And so many people are afraid of taking the wrong action and, you know, or what's, or maybe not taking the right action. So they just stay in inaction, mm -hmm. take the action, go with what really inspires you. And 
and take it as far as you can. So some people like they'll start acting and they come to the part where it's hard. Sometimes writing is very hard and you go through it and it's just, it'll take you to that next level. Okay. That's so, so ju just to add into that, when it does get hard for you as a writer, since today we are talking on authors speak theory, what yeah. do you do at that moment? I keep going. I, I never let it stop me. And I always, I always recognize that it's going to be hard. Sometimes it's going to be hard. And more okay. important than that, so here's something I want to tell you about the, the, the creative cycle as I see it. So everyone goes on this cycle. So, you know, whatever you're creating, I don't care if you're a fine artist, you're a musician, mm -hmm. um, you're a writer, you're a speaker, you're going to think like, oh, you know, it's like here, I'm, it's okay. And then it's actually, it's not that good. No, it's, it's, it's average, it's mediocre, it's pretty bad. And they go on this curve and then it's actually, no, it's pretty good. And it's how they're seeing themselves, how they're seeing their writer, their writing or mm -hmm. whatever their art is. And that always happens with creatives. And then they'll think like, oh, this is awful. And when the curve's at the bottom, it's like, oh, this is terrible. It's not worth doing. And they stop. Right. So I think it's important to recognize that curve. Like you asked about your broadcasting. Mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. you're bright. sometimes you're thinking like, oh, this is terrible. I'm not doing any good. Or like, ah, oh, it's amazing. If you're thinking I'm always amazing, you're never going to get better. If you're thinking you're always terrible, you're not going to get better. And that is always changing, right? Your self-perception. Yeah. The reality is <laughs> so always true. Going to be middle. So true. If you increase your skill, that zone of reality will raise. So mm -hmm. it will be more accurate when you're at the top, when you're thinking, yeah, this is really great. But what I believe is if as artists, as creative people, if we recognize that that curve is going to happen, it's just so much better. It's so much easier. It's like, yep, now I'm thinking my work's terrible and that's okay. And I'm going to again think it's going to be great Fantastic. one day. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Nancy asked the question saying, uh, any advice for newbie writers? I think that kind of really answers the question unless there's something else that you would quickly want to add in. Well, I would, yes, I think that did partially answer that question. Mm -hmm. And don't get discouraged. <clears throat> Notice that there will be times when you think your work is awful. There are things when you, times when you think your work is great. And the truth is somewhere in between those two, usually. Yeah. Yeah. And, and have a regular time every day where you write. Even if it's 15 minutes, mm -hmm. that is your sacred time if you're living with somebody, I don't care if it's your kids, your husband, your wife, whoever that is, make sure you're all in agreement that they're not going to disturb you at that time, that that is your time to write, whatever that is. And wow. you can, like, you know, for some time it might be 15 minutes and later on it might be an hour or whatever that is, but have that time that's sacred for your writing. Fantastic. Wow. Datta, thank you so much for throwing light into all these different uh, topics and areas of discussion. Um, I had a fantastic time. Thank you so much for adjusting with the hour. I know that we were supposed to start at your time 10 and it kind of ended up being nine. So thank but you actually, for being understanding. Anyway, we're 21 minutes past 10, so <laughs> we're on time. We yeah. Hour of warm up. <laughs> this is just the warm up, absolutely. <laughs> I had a fantastic, a real inspirational and a, a great talk with you. And I'm hoping uh, to have another conversation with you uh, on the near future on the broadcast. Uh, and I'm hoping even your wife would be interested to coming on. Yeah, and she is. Yeah, she's going to be in touch with you, by the way. I mentioned that. So I'm very glad to hear. We, we will definitely get on Zoom and maybe we can all get Together, have a conversation and see how we can do the next broadcast then. And I, I just want to mention everybody, just so you don't know, because you probably don't know, my wife's also a published author. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So we have we will have a few more sessions coming up and I'm really excited about them. Data, thank you for joining in. Thank Lots you. of love and all the very best and catch you real soon. Have a great thank weekend. You. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks for having me on. With thank all my heart. Everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, Data. Take care. Yeah, bye.